much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. That's the uh, that's that's the one doing the damage yeah, today. That's, that's Ireland is fortunate to possess many pristine rivers and lakes, spread out across the length and breadth of the country. These freshwater bodies are a fantastic resource and amenity for many people on this island of ours. Angling and fly fishing for trout and salmon in particular is a very popular pastime in Ireland. Indeed, our fertile rivers and lakes are bringing in more and more visiting anglers every year. A very popular time for anglers to come to Ireland is the mayfly season. Many of our locks produce an abundant mayfly hatch during May and early June. Probably the two most popular lakes at this time are Loch Derg and Loch Corrib. Indeed, Loch Corrib is widely believed to be one of the world's great game fisheries. The picturesque town of Uchtarard, which is located about halfway up the western shore of Loch Corrib, hosts an international Mayfly Festival weekend every year. Lots of activities are organised for visitors, such as hill walking, food tasting, golf, cycling and a junior angling contest. But the highlight is always the international angling competition, which is run on a Sunday from 11.30am to 5.30 p.m. There are many prizes to be won in various different competition categories, so everybody has a chance of winning something. Yeah. I'll be doing this several times during the day, I think. <laughs> 10 a.m. on the day of the competition, and it's a wet start for the participating anglers. The boats need to be bailed out before all the fishing gear can be brought on board. The weather forecast is for drier conditions later in the day. But for now, the anglers need their waterproof clothing. At the pier, the fishermen and women can check in with the organisers from the Uchtarard Angling Club. Meanwhile, just up the road from the pier, a fisherman is collecting his live mayflies for a unique type of fly fishing called dapping. We'll take a look at the world of dapping a little later on. Right now, it's nearly time for the start of the 2015 Mayfly Angling Competition. All the participants are ready for the off. The boats make a beeline for the myriad of bays scattered throughout Loch Corrib. It's tough going fishing in the rain in the morning, but the weather soon improves dramatically. By the time of the weigh-in in the evening, the sun has come out. Before the prize giving, 
The anglers who have come from far and wide slake their thirsts in the pubs of Uchtharard. The chat, of course, revolves around how the fishing went and which fly was the flavour of the day. That's the yeah, that's that's the one doing the damage yeah, today. That's it's definitely yeah. definitely the main thing. Yeah. Uh, I find it works better on the dark. Yeah, don't tell me yeah. Yeah. I bought every spider yeah. made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was only two of the work. The one you can't get anything. It's got a rough yeah. yeah. No yeah. hackle. No hackle on it. A marquee has been set up to accommodate the prize giving ceremonies and it's not long before the place is buzzing. The winners of the various different categories collect their trophies. Well done. What a trophy. But the overall winner of the Tommy Tuck Memorial Trophy with the heaviest bag is Ken Ferris. The Ferrises have been involved in fly fishing for many years. Indeed, Ken's father was a previous winner of this competition. I didn't think I'd be winning the international mayfly competition. At 5.15 this morning, and Mike says, Ken, please, Mary and Joseph, where are we going to go now? I says, we better go home. I said, we're fishing in two hours time. Who's going to be the gilly? Who's going to fish? Mike will toss the coin. I tossed the coin and Michael lost the toss. If it wasn't for my brother, I'd never have won it. Every single prize is handed out at this stage. Even the chefs are getting carried away with the festivities. The organising committee has made sure to have a steak cup for everybody that fished in the competition. If you're going to go fly fishing, you're going to need a selection of artificial flies, be they dry flies, wet flies or nymphs. In Uchtarard, the place to go is Tommy Tucks. Now, do you want this one? It's a uh, leggy octopus. We got that. Yeah, this one I have. This one you have? Yeah. Okay, that's that one. Okay. Of course, besides fishing flies, you'll find any other tackle you might need here as well. Any fish yesterday? Two fish, good. Thanks. There we go. Six you. Thank you. Thank you. Martin Butler of Inland Fisheries, Ireland takes us through the various representations of the mayfly life cycle. Yeah, here we have the, the mayfly nymph, which is the emerging mayfly, um, fished slowly down deeper. This is a wet mayfly, just fished, drawing it through the water, slowly on an intermediate line maybe, or a floating line. Also a wet mayfly here, and dry. Dry mayflies then fished on the surface with floating line. And then you have the spent mayfly, spent net, to replicate the dying mayfly on the surface of water. When you're out in the lake, you have to go through your collection of flies and decide which ones are most suitable for the day that's in it. Here, Kevin Crowley of Inland Fisheries Ireland shows us some of the fishing flies and tackle he uses on Loch Coral. Um, so these are all wet mayfly patterns up here. Um, I find the McPhail's mayfly on the point a very good fly. The one with the red rib is also quite good. Uh, some dry mayflies up here for when the fish are up at the surface. Uh, golden. Golden wolf, uh, green wolf there as well, very good fly. The typical rod for fishing on the, the wet fly and the mayfly is a 10 and a half to 11 foot, 6 or 7 weight fly rod. Floating line usually, some lads fish an intermediate. Generally three flies, a point fly and two droppers. A couple of mayfly patterns, 
and a golden olive bumble on the top dropper. Had you made, no, not yet. It was a cold night. It's taking a bit longer today. Everybody knows you need lots of patience to be a fisherman. This old adage rings true even on Loch Carib in May. You're in the zone now, there, young Crowley. I'm trying. More and more Mayfly, Martin. But good things do come to those who wait. Yes. He's not too bad, he's fighting hard. He's too efficient. A nice, healthy brown trout. About a pound and a half weight. It came to the Mayfly fished wet, stripped back rapidly, just under the water's surface. Once the fish is played out, it comes smoothly to the landing net. It's not long before the trout is released back into the pristine waters of the coral. Of course, there would be no mayfly angling season without the mayfly itself. Mayflies require clean, unpolluted water to survive in. Inland Fisheries Ireland officers like Ken O'Neill and Flan Ryan here often take kick samples from rivers and lakes to find out how healthy the water is. From the different species of insect present in the sample, they can gauge what level of pollution is present in the river. I'm going to spring it over. The presence of mayfly larvae would indicate clean water. One thing for, for mayflies, they actually need uh, quite a high uh, oxygen level, you know, in, in, in the water. So like they need uh, kind of a riffly surface, you know, and some, yeah, on the, on the littoral zones where you get a, a good wave, uh, wave action on the, on the lake shore and that, and probably, that, that, that would be good enough because that would keep the oxygen levels, but you wouldn't actually see them further, much further out. Mayflies, when they, when they hatch out, they, they, they hatch out with a very pale colour um, wing they have when they hatch out. It's called the, the sub-imago, and the anglers call it the dun. But like, um, when, they, when they hatch out, they, they get blown off into a, into a tree or a branch or a bit of grass or something like that. And after a while, the actual imago um, occurs where it's actually, uh, it actually becomes uh, a lot more shinier um, and more colourful. Okay, that's it. The larvae of mayflies, which anglers call nymphs, live for two or three years on the bottom of suitable lakes and rivers. There they live in silt or sand and filter organic matter out of the water. The larvae grow continuously, regularly shedding their external skeleton and producing a new and larger one. Scientists call each of the stages between the molts an instar. In fact, Mayflies can emerge at any time, from April through to autumn, but the main hatches are normally in late May and early June. Eventually the mayfly larvae rise to the surface and the last external skeleton breaks open to reveal a winged insect. At this stage, the mayfly has only a couple of days to live if it doesn't get eaten by a hungry predator first. The upright wings of the mayfly are often compared to the sails of a sailing boat. Reproduction is its only priority. 
Mayflies are unusual among aquatic insects in that they undergo another molt before they are ready to mate and lay eggs. As we have already heard, the two stages of the winged mayfly are called the subimago and the imago. Anglers call these stages the dun and the spinner. Mating takes place in mid-air with swarms of mayflies performing an aerial dance as they select a partner. The fertilised female flies back to the lake where she lays thousands of tiny eggs. Upon completion of this final act, the mayfly's wings lie flat on the water's surface. Mayflies are a very important food source for fish. In fact, mayflies are a very important component of the ecosystems they survive in. A temporary angling museum has been set up in Uchtarard to showcase the long tradition of the mayfly season. There are many old photos, books and fishing gear on display. Museum curator Mary Kine and museum patron Brendan Ferguson give us a taste of what's on display in this museum dedicated to angling. It's um, a hardy angler's guide which is hardies are one of the most um, famous uh, uh, tackle makers and reel makers uh, um, in British Isles anyway, mm -hmm. and probably worldwide, but uh, it dates from 1950s. There's some very interesting stuff in it, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, we can put that on display. Okay, yeah, well next door now we have a box that you can see with all the old flies, the salmon flies, belong to uh, Tuck's uh, tackling shop, you know, the angling oh, shop yes. below. Yeah. and um, have uh, old reels. We have an yeah. old eel net out there belonging to Mary, Crawley. Brendan and another patron of the museum, Kevin Clancy, give us the background and some of the photos on display. This, this is a description of uh, Ed Hill who uh, uh, got a trout seven and a half pounds uh, casting at the point of Rignan, uh, with fishing with Jerry Malloy and my father one morning. Right. And he wrote a little poem about it. The pictures show what the fishing on the carbo about. It's about the fish, but it's also about having the lunch and it's about having the, the fun, you know, three hours later. That's yeah. right, yeah. So that's, that's, that's the whole tradition, of course, tradition. Yeah. yeah. And I think actually the catching, picking the mayflies along the shore is just as important as anything. You know, that that's a ritual as well. There's a picture there of about nine young fellas in their boxes and they out on the island. Down the road in the Angler's Bar, there are lots more memorabilia on display for the inquisitive visitor. 